We got a number one victory royale Yeah, Fortnite, we bout to get down. get down Ten kills on the board right now Just wiped out Tomato Town My friend just got downed I revived him, now we're heading southbound Now we're in the Pleasant Park streets Look at the map, go to the marked sheet Take me to your Xbox to play Fortnite today Lately, I've been really thinking about the difference between movies and video games when it comes to who created them. For example, on movies, we tend to think of the writer or director behind that project. Like with The Dark Knight, we think of Christopher Nolan. And then obviously with the Wonder Woman movie, everybody talks about how great Patty Jenkins was as a director being able to craft a good Wonder Woman movie in the first place. Um... You know, we're not gonna we're not gonna bring up the second one though. I'm the trash man! Oh, that's gonna be a disaster. I mean hell, you can even see it with TV shows like Rick and Morty. You got Dan Harmon and you got Justin Roiland, and the show would be nothing without those two. I mean they already tried to get rid of Dan Harmon once with community. And uh you know. I am an activist, that's always been my choice. Truth is I've never voted except when I watch the voice. And I think one of the main reasons I've been thinking about this so much is because, I mean, we've all seen how popular these games are, but not a lot of people know who made them. For example, with Persona 5, I mean, that series blew up with Persona 5. That's when I got into it myself, and of course I've gone back and played all the earlier games. And I'm sitting there thinking, I mean, who created this? Who did this? Who did this? Did what? What are you talking about? Jizz all over the pages of this nice magazine I was nice enough to tell you about. Like, who was the guy? Who was the visionary behind this? Well, in the case of Persona 5, Persona 3, Persona 4, the Shinigami Tensei video games, I probably said that wrong, don't judge me. It's this guy, Katsura Hashino. And when I went to go look up more information about this guy, like I did with Yoko Taro in the last video, there's not a lot of information about this guy. That All the interviews that are out there are all about Persona 5 and his favorite characters and how hard it was to work on the game. But I always try and look at who these people are as people. And, I mean, just look at how small this guy's Wikipedia page is. There's basically nothing on him. And as I kept searching for more and more interviews about this guy and trying to figure out who he was, I could really only draw a few conclusions. Number one is I know for a fact that this guy really loves fantasy. I'm going on an adventure! Obviously he makes fantasy RPGs, you can see the castles and the swords and everything in his games in the Persona series, and even his new game, Project Re-Fantasy, that he's working on. I mean, it's in the name, right? And the other conclusion that I was able to draw was, this is a guy who really cares about what his fans think about him and his games. Notice me, senpai! Notice me! One of my favorite interviews that I looked at was this one where he's doing an interview with 4Gamer, and it somehow gets onto the topic of fan expectations. Hashino responds to a question like this. Customers have these expectations, and I feel that they believe in me, so I feel that I absolutely cannot betray them. First of all, we want to include content everyone would expect. Fundamentally, we aim for the design to be packed with unique mechanics and fun things that surpass customers' original expectations. Yet it's complicated, but we feel that it turned out how we intended it to. However, it's taken a long time, and people have had a while to wonder what the game contains. Of course, that was an interview before Persona 5 came out when it was taking forever to make. So, is Hashino a perfectionist obsessed with fantasy? Well, I don't know him. But he seems to talk quite a bit about how he wants his games to have unique systems, characters, and settings, and he doesn't seem afraid to take his time to make sure both him and the player end up with a product that they are happy with. What should we do? Although, some game journalists don't seem super happy about his products. All right. On a more positive note, what I really love about making these types of videos is the more I research about a creator, the more I realize just how much these game creators care about their work and their fans. In an interview with US Gamer, Hashino talks about his reason for creating RPGs. He states, Role playing is all about experiencing someone else's life. My goal is to create games that affect players' real lives in some way. 
but that sort of change can't be forced on them by creators, it comes from being personally affected by the game. By experiencing a fictional situation through the eyes of a character, you can step back and evaluate your own life in the real world. Just like people do after watching a great movie or reading a good book. It's all about empathy, immersion, and excitement. Three things games can provide better than any form of entertainment. And that's the reason I devote myself to creating RPGs. It's pretty clear, to me at least, that Hashino wants to provide his players with an escape. A way to let his audience know that they aren't alone. He cares. Persona 5, and the series in general, blew up because it gave players the opportunity to connect to its characters and its world. It tackled themes that we can relate to, and that's why it was so memorable to so many people. Hashino created something truly special with these games, and yes, they are fantasy stories, and yes, they take a long time to make, because he does seem to be a bit of a perfectionist. However, he created characters and experiences that I, and many others, will remember forever. One last thing here. Hashino did an interview in 2012 with Udon Entertainment. Hashino. Four or five years ago, I got the measles and my temperature shot up above 40 degrees Celsius. I found out later that I was in such bad shape, all of my relatives had been called in just in case they needed to say their final goodbyes. My wife stayed next to me the whole time. My fever was so intense that I didn't feel any pain. And at some point, I started to wonder if that's what it feels like to die. I saw my wife next to me and thought to myself, it wouldn't be so bad to die like this. I just think I'd be okay with it, as long as I had my loved ones close by like I did at that time. That's just my personal opinion, of course. <laughs>